Welcome back subscribers to another tutorial on agrarian skies and today I'm going to show you how to build a smeltery. A smeltery is going to be a very important uh, item that you want to create early on in the game as soon as you can because it is going to double your ore output and it's going to make it easier for you to smelt things because you don't have to wait to get a dot dust block to actually smelt something like in a furnace. You can actually smelt the uh, broken iron ore, the crushed iron ore, or the, even the dust by itself and so uh, I'll show you how to get that done so let's get started. Now in order to create uh, these bricks here that I have, you see, you see seared bricks right now, you're going to first need to create, uh, get some gravel, some sand, and some clay. Now obviously your gravel is from uh, hammering uh, cobblestone and after uh, you get your sand from hammering gravel but you're saying, well, how do I get clay in, um, in agrarian skies? Well, you're going to need some dust, and you're going to need either an oak barrel or a stone barrel with water in it. And I will show you in just a minute. We'll go up here to a stone barrel that I have. And here's a stone barrel with water in it. And I'm going to uh, right-click a uh, dust into that stone barrel and voila, I have a block of clay. So if I break that block of clay, I'm going to get usually four or five uh, pieces of clay, depending on obviously the chance of it breaking into different amounts. So you take your sand, your uh, clay, and your gravel, and that will give you two grouts. <coughs> You're going to put the grouts into the furnace and they will uh, make your bricks. For the minimal size of smeltery, which is a one layer smeltery, you're going to need 135 seared bricks to make everything that you need. The controller, the drain, the tank, and so forth. So you're going to want to make at least 68 grout and then uh, fire it in your furnace and get your bricks. Uh, the first thing you want to make is the controller, and the controller is basically eight bricks like you would make a furnace. The uh, drain that you're going to need, oops, typing too fast, the drain, the, you'll need one drain, and that is six with empty slots in the middle. We'll give you the drain. A faucet is three slots, just like you would make a bucket or uh, a clay pot. You would use three seared bricks to make a faucet for your drain. You're going to make need to make a tank to put the fuel source for your smeltery. And the tank is another eight seared bricks with um, any kind of glass in the center. Regular plain glass is fine. And you're also going to need to make a casting table so that you can um, you can do a casting table. I, I always do the casting table first and then I do a casting basin. The casting table is seven uh, bricks uh, in the same shape as you would do uh, pans for armor. And the casting table is, I believe, the same as a cauldron, uh, is a seven in the shape of a cauldron, in the shape of a U. So those are the items that you need. You're going to need to have at least a 5 by 5 area to uh, create your smeltery. And uh, that the 5 by 5 is actually for the, the sides of it. You will start with a 3 by 3 in the center. This will be the floor of your um, smeltery. Then you take uh, the rest of the bricks that you made. I have more than I need here, but you only need um, 19 bricks to start out with. You're going to put those bricks on the outside of this 3x3 three three area, therefore making, oops, yep, that's fine, making the 3x3, three, three three, um, the first layer of your spell tree. So what you're going to want to put down first is your um, controller, you're going to want your tank, and you're going to want um, another brick, and this will go in the front. So you'll have your controller, your tank, and a brick. Now, this tank happens to have lava. Anytime you have lava in a seared tank and you break it, what's nice about um, this seared tank is that it keeps the lava. When you create your seared tank, it's going to be empty. And so you say, well, how do I fill it with lava? So let's go back upstairs. 
you're going to need a bucket you're going to need a crucible and a heat source for your crucible now a crucible is this item right here to make a crucible you're going to need to get some clay and you're going to need uh, some bone meal you're going to make an unfired crucible that is going to be your recipe which takes seven porcelain clays and a porcelain clay is a piece of clay and a piece of bone meal once you have your unfired crucible you're going to put that into a furnace and cook it however you can and you'll have your crucible your crucible you're going to right click uh, cobble in it and below it you need some kind of heat source I have nether rack here uh, that's on fire that's cr uh, creating the heat for it but a torch underneath or your furnace underneath will do the same thing it will turn the cobble and you can see this one's being fed cobble right here um, I have an automated system here but for in the beginning you're just going to have your crucible over whatever heat source you can uh, get for it and it's going to melt that cobble into lava and once it's melted into lava you can right click and get your bucket of lava and fill your tank in and let me get in the right spot here on my elevator okay so now we have our basic smeltery but we need one thing more um, that we want to start it out with is we're going to need the drain and that's why you don't see any activity here on the smeltery you do need a drain for it I like to go up one for my drain and actually I don't need this corner one right here let's see oh I did it in the wrong spot guys I sure did the that should be this controller should be here I was wondering I said it should already start showing that it's active and let me do the one more brick here so sorry about that I had actually placed it on the first row of the 3x3 three three and actually should be outside that 3x3 three three area so now you can see my smeltery is active so it will start smelting at this point but you're going to need a way to get those ores out of the smeltery into ingots or um, blocks iron blocks so you're going to take a drain I've got one here you're going to put a faucet on it which I have here and below that the first thing you're going to want to get is the casting table not the basin so you're going to do a casting table here now in order to get ingots out of this you're going to have to make what is called a ingot cast an ingot cast uh, this one is made out of gold so you're going to have to have gold and usually you'll get gold or um, out of your um, pulver uh, pulverize or uh, sifting of the um, I believe it's the sand or the gravel or the dust you'll get uh, some gold ore and you're going to want to smelt that first in your smeltery because what you want to do is this ingot casting and to create the ingot casting once you have your enough gold in there smelted you're going to uh, let's see I don't have an ingot on me let me grab an ingot real quick I'll just grab an iron ingot is you're going to right click on the casting table and then right click on the faucet and your gold will pour out and create this cast that we have right here and that's a cast you're going to want to put in your casting table as you start to smelt your ores so in this in the first layer for every layer that you create on your smeltery because you can go as high I believe as high as you want on the smeltery depends on how many bricks you want to make um, for every um, it said on the wiki for every one you get nine but when you get to the third layer it only adds six more so I'm not sure if the wiki is not updated to the latest uh, Tinker's Construct for agrarian uh, skies but the first two layers will give you nine outputs and then the third layer gives you six outputs so we might want to try to uh, do an experiment and see how many the next layer would do so inside your smeltery you're going to put either broken ore you can put crushed ore or you can put dust you don't have to change these into uh, dust blocks you can put any of the versions here now you may not get a full ingot out of it but you don't have to wait around and um, and keep breaking these down until you get or putting them together until you get what you need so as that's uh, as that is working and I'll show you that this does work it's going to uh, 
cook this uh, or smelt this these products into um, melted ore. And be so before I add the next layer, um, you'll want I want to wait and show you that that at this level you will still be able to smelt ores. You just will only have a limited amount of processing slots to put in. Now you can have more than one tank. You can stack these tanks. You can automate your system later on and, and bring in the fluid, which I plan to do. That's why I decided to move my smeltery from that area over there to here, as it's closer to where I have my uh, crucibles and the ability to flow lava right into the tank and, and automate this system. That's what I plan to do. Okay, so it looks like our ores uh, has smelted. We have four ingots and four nuggets. Now, nuggets you can't pull out until they're ingots. Uh, if you happen to um, pour it into something and you don't have enough to make any more and you want to do another ingot from another ore, you're going to have to just lose that amount. So be, ca be real careful on when uh, looking at this. You just right click or mouse over the area where the liquid metal is and it will tell you exactly how much you have. So all you have to do is right click on that. It will fill the cast. And there we have our first ingot of iron. Okay. So now we're going to add another layer here. And when you add a brick on the smeltery or the tank, you need to shift click, so make sure that you can pop that in there. Or actually just the smeltery controller is the only one I think that. Now, mobs will spawn if you don't like this area up. So it's best to, at, at once you've finished the, the highest level that you want on your layers, you're gonna wanna put a, um, a torch and light that area up because mobs will spawn on top of the smeltery. So now if we look at our uh, controller, we have a doubled our slot area, another nine slots. You can shift click any of these items in there and it will fill in all those areas with that one item. So there we got the second layer. Now we're gonna add a third layer. And this is where they were saying for every three by three uh, layer that you add or or a layer that you add to the smeltery, you get an additional nine slots. Well, if we look at it, we only got six more slots. We didn't get the nine. I don't think, I have think I might have enough for another one. So we can check and see. I have some fancy seared and some different types of um, bricks here. And uh, let's see, we're probably gonna have to stack our way up here. So we'll just use this as a way, a means to get to the top. And we're going to add another layer of uh, bricks here. And let's see how many. Uh, let's see how many slots it adds to it. They're saying, well, how did I get these seared bricks and stuff like this? It was completing a quest. I got some of these fancier um, stones. And we're going to have enough. I can probably put another smeltery drain up here just in the meantime. As long as the level's completed, uh, I don't think I have to use it as a particular drain. So we will um, let's just go ahead and break these two and put our light back because we don't want mom spawning here. So uh, I see only nine. I didn't get an extra layer. So this looks like the maximum that you can do on agrarian skies is going to be um, 24 slots. So adding that extra layer didn't complete it. It may be different on other um, other mod packs or by itself, but for our purposes, three uh, high is going to be the limit for agrarian skies, at least for this uh, mod pack version. So now we look in our thing. We have 12 ingots and four. Well, I don't want to sit here and right click 12 ingots. If I can get a casting basin back here, so what I'm going to do is on this side, I'm going to put another drain, but instead of a casting table, I'm going to put a casting basin. And I'll put my faucet on that drain. And now when I right click, I'll be able to get nine of those, um, nine of those ingots out of the smeltery into the block. So I only had to click once to get nine out. And I'll just get an iron block and I can always break it back into ingots if I need to. Okay, so um, that's a way to get nine ingots out really quick instead of depending on how far you filled this. Um, so remember shift click puts all the items in there and we can start to fill it again, up again. I have three ingots in there at the moment with um, 
four nuggets. And those nuggets are probably coming from the broken ore. They're not going to give you as much. Uh, so any lava that you have, you just right click on the tank and that will fill the tank up with the lava. Okay, so uh, how do we automate the system a little bit? Well, you have a redstone clock, which is an automatic kind of right click thing. It's kind of like the autonomous activator, but this one's a little less expensive to make. So let me go into any eye and I'll show you how to make a redstone clock. And a redstone clock is basically four pieces of stone, four uh, redstone dust, and a redstone torch in the center. And then you get this particular item. So if you place it above the drain, it's going to automatically start to right click. Now normally I also attach a uh, redstone because I normally put my redstone clock over my basin, but I know I don't have, I don't, well now I have more ingots. Um, so I may not want to, so as soon as I remove this, then it'll start to, to do it for me. You can automate this even further by putting an autonomous activator in front of it and have, have the autonomous activator right click and then you're going to need a hopper or some kind of a ducting system to move it into a chest so that it moves it out and just doesn't float it about. So um, that is the redstone clock. You can do that over the ingot uh, base uh, casting table or over the basin. Again, put your, uh, I would always put my uh, lever there because sometimes uh, you don't want this filling up with less than an uh, entire block. Otherwise, you're going to have to pull it out into a tank. And there's another video I have that shows you when I talk about the smeltery of how to pull uh, liquid out of this and into, I think I need one more. We'll wait till it, yeah, that should be it. So as soon as I see that it has a block filled, I turn it off just in case I don't have enough to do another block. So that's one way to automate. There's a lot of different ways to automate this system that are more advanced, but for I wanted to make this tutorial as simple as possible. So this is how you make a smeltery tank. And obviously in agrarian skies, it looks like we can only go three high on our, on our smeltery. And you can have more than two uh, metals uh, melted in it as long as they don't form an alloy. They will say separate and you can drain them separately. But if you put two items that create an alloy, you will end up with an alloy in your tank. So be sure you know what your recipes are for uh, the different metals that you put into your smeltery. Well, I hope this uh, little tutorial has helped you um, to start your smeltery on your Agrarian Skies gameplay. This is a very simple tutorial just to get you started. There's obviously more advanced ways you can use a smeltery, but I'm not going to cover that in this one. Uh, my next uh, tutorial will probably be on the ME system that you see behind me. This is not the smallest ME system you can have, but probably the most ideal size for the Agrarian Skies of the ME system. You can make these as big as possible, but that particular monster right there takes a lot of processing of different types of items. And so um, the small one, it's not worth it to do it. It's better to do this size because you, you have to uh, make so many components for it. But I hope to get a tutorial of that Emmy system for you as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, if you like it, please hit that like button. And if you want to see other tutorials or other videos I create on my channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I thank you for watching. Bye.